Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to discuss uh, calculus with parametric curve. We're going to extend some of those information that we've learned in Calc 1 and Calc 2 to parametric curves. Normally if we had a function y equal to f of x, x would have been representing a variable y. But now with parametric curves, you don't always have functions relating x and y. You can have curves where uh, based on a third variable, you introduce x and y. And then the question becomes, can we still discuss the derivative at a specific given point? And the idea is very simple. Let's say if I ask you, what is dy over dx? That means find out what is the derivative of y with respect to x, but assuming that x is a function of t and y is a function of t. So these two are related somehow to each other based on the variable t. Then we know that dy over dt could be considered as dy over dx multiplied by dx over dt. The ratio, uh, you can think about this as a... Um, composition of function, chain rule if you want to prefer that way, or you can just simply say, okay, dy over dx multiplied by dx over dt is the same as dy over dt. Now, if we're looking for dy over dx, what is dy over dx? You can divide both sides by dx over dt. So dy over dx is basically dy over dt, the derivative of y with respect to t, divided by the derivative of x with respect to t, if you have functions of x and t. And similarly, you can extend the same derivative to second derivative, third derivative. For the second derivative, first you have to figure out what is dy over dx. So first you figure out what is dy over dx. Then after you figure that out, then the second derivative would be similarly. Take a derivative of that with respect to t, divide by the derivative of x with respect to t. It's just instead of y, you just have the first derivative here. Instead of this y, you would replace the first derivative. Third derivative would be the same. You would have the second derivative instead of y and continue and so on. Okay, so let's do an example just to see how you use the derivatives. So here's a curve defined as t squared and y equal to t cubed minus 4t. And they say, show that c has two tangents at the point 4 and 0 and find their equations. Okay, so let's do part A first. Part A says, find out uh, if there is two tangents at the given point four and zero, this is X and Y coordinate. And we wanna find out then later on what is the equation of that tangent. So first, if you look at the given point, what do you know is X is four, Y is zero. So into the equation, I've given x is equal to 4, so I know t squared must be equal to 4, because x would be represented by t squared. And the equation y, what is given is t cubed minus 4t must equal 0. <coughs> Sorry about that. So from the first equation, what do we get? We get t equals plus or minus 2. Second equation gives us that t is you can factor out the t, t is either plus or minus 2 or 0. So you, what you want is, you want the t to satisfy both equations. You want to get x as 4 and y as 0 as well. So the only option is to have positive and negative 2 as the result of t. The 0 is not acceptable because if you pick 0 for your t, what you get is that the y would be definitely 0, but the x value also would be 0. It's not going to be correspond to the point 4 and 0. So to correspond to the point 4 and 0, so this point 4 and 0 for x and y is correspond to t value of 2 and negative 2. If you replace 2 for t, what you would get 4 and 0. If you replace negative 2 for t into x and y, you still get 4 and 0. So we found out there are two, two t values that gives us that point. So basically, that means at the point 2, 0, here is, let's say, 2, 0, what you would have is like you would have a curve 
it kind of goes that point and returns something like this you'll cross this point twice for the uh, two different t values you will still go through that point so maybe the curve goes along this direction and then returns that way okay so now if you look at this at each direction you would have a tangent line you would have a tangent line in this direction and another tangent line in the other direction so basically it is correct that you would have two tangents at the given point four and zero but first what we need to do is find out what is dui over dx that means find out what is the slope of the tangent line so this is basically the slope and that would be find out what is dy over dt then divide that by dx over dt dy over dt derivative of y with respect to t derivative of y with respect to t would be 3t squared minus 4 derivative of x with respect to t simply 2t so now i have the slope i can evaluate the slope at two different values at negative 2 and then figure out what is the slope at positive 2 and this negative 2 is for t so t equal to negative 2 at t equal negative 2 and at t equal to positive 2 you get two different slopes so if you replace t equal to negative 2 what we get is 3 times negative 2 uh, 3 times negative 2 squared minus 4 so that is uh, 8 divided by 2 times negative 2 you, we get negative 2 for the slope and if you replace positive 2 we get uh, 4 in the denominator and numerator is 12 minus 4 8 8 divided by 2 is still positive 2 so what I'm doing is basically I'm replacing these two are coming from the slope equation I'm replacing t with the given negative 2 and positive 2 and that simplifies in this case to negative 2 for t equal to negative 2 and positive 2 for t equal to positive 2 okay so we found the slope okay then what are the two equations you can simply find out using the slope format y minus y1 equal m x minus x1 slope intercept form and you have you should have two tangent lines one of them the first one is if you pick a slope to be negative 2 what do you get is y minus 0 equal negative 2 times x minus 4 and the other one would be y minus 0 equal 2 times x minus 4 the slopes Uh, you can simplify these equations so basically what we found is the two equation of tangent lines correspond to each one this is one of them with the positive slope the other one has negative slope negative two okay in part b then asks find out where c is concave upward that means they want to find out if you remember concavity comes from the second derivative so we want to find out what is the second derivative of y with respect to x which means we need to figure out what is the derivative of 3t squared minus 4 divided by 2t with respect to t and then divide that by dx over dt the numerator the derivative of that you should use quotient rule and that would be simply I'm going to be a bit lazy and skip over the steps. Derivative of 3t squared divided by 2t. 3t squared divided by 2t is 3 half t. So this is 3 half minus. Uh, you should use quotient rule. 2 over t would be plus 2 over t squared. And here in the denominator, dx over dt, simply 2t dx over dt is the derivative of x with respect to t and this is our second derivative you can simplify it if you want to make common denominator 
but this is our second derivative, which you can write it as multiply 2t squared to both numerator and denominator. You can get rid of the fraction if you want to do that. So what do you get in denominator is 4t cubed, and the numerator you would get 3t squared plus 2. Plus four, maybe. Okay, so now the question was for part B. The question was find where C is concave apart, or the curve, uh, the this uh, curve is concave apart. And where is the curve concave apart? Is when the second derivative is positive. So when when does this second derivative equal is greater than to zero? Numerator is always positive in this case because it's squared plus a positive number. Denominator must be zero, so that implies that four t cube must be greater than zero, which tells that t must be greater than zero. So if t is positive, then the curve has a concave upward. Okay, so basically, in this section is correspond to t positive, and you notice that you would have a concave upward curve. That's how it looks like. In the other part, you would have a concave downward. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the important thing at this point is just to be able to take the derivatives properly. Make sure that you do examples. Okay, how about area under a curve? Again, the same idea would be extended. So let's say if we have a function, y equal to f of x, and assuming f is positive, just to make sure we're talking about the area, over the interval a to b, then the area would be, area under the curve would be the integral from a to b of f of x dx. But if y is not represented as a function of x, if y is just a curve, y equals g of t and x is given as f of t then how about the area under this curve and the area would be correspond to g of alpha is a so these boundaries the question would be for what t values x is equal to a for what t values x is equal to b by the way sorry this is not g this is f there we go for what values these boundaries are correspond to x so for at what values f is equal to a and at what value f is equal to b in this case i called it alpha and beta so alpha is where we get x to be a and beta is where we get y uh, x to be b so these alpha and beta are correspond to the t value and then f of x simply is the y value so the y value is g of x and what is d of x it's the derivative with respect to t so g would be f prime t multiplied by dt so this area represent this is the formula for the area if you're dealing with a curve there's i didn't go into detail of it but the notation is basically correspond to exactly what we have there just to see an example of it find an area under the uh, one arch of the uh, cyclic if you remember last time we talked about the cyclic in this case maybe i should write it as just to make sure that you still know two one minus cosine theta we know that if you have a coefficient out here that coefficient is basically the radius of the cyclic so i can say in this case r equals to two this coefficient and what was the cycloid look like? The cycloid was basically starting from the origin. In this case, it will go up and then it will repeat itself. It's moving along the... Uh, this length of this curve is basically correspond to uh, the movement of the point and the circle. So this length here is 2 pi r, if you remember. And last time... 
with an example here radius is 2 so basically this is 4 pi so this is the circumference of that circle okay so what do you want to find out is basically this area so we want to integrate from 0 to 4 pi this is the area of the area under this curve the area under this curve would be correspond to the 2 times 1 minus cosine theta that's the y value multiplied by f prime which is the dx over dt so dx over dt multiplied by dt that's the same as the dx value so instead of dx over dt we can write derivative of 2 theta minus sine theta 2 theta minus sine theta derivative times dt in this case t is basically theta sorry about that. and if you simplify we have 0 to 4 pi here 2 and 2 basically become 4 you have 1 minus cosine theta multiply by derivative of theta minus sine theta derivative of theta is 1 derivative of sine theta is cosine theta d theta and this is simply 4 integral from 0 to 4 pi 1 minus cosine theta squared then the question becomes how do you integrate this and since we have dealt with integration techniques it should be quite easy you can use the trigonometric identities one minus four so first square this that would be one minus two cosine theta plus cosine squared theta and instead of the cosine squared what do we need to replace this is four integral zero to four pi 1 minus 2 cosine theta and instead of cosine squared cosine squared if you remember it was 1 half 1 minus cosine 2 theta 1 plus cosine 2 theta and so instead of that I can replace 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2 theta d theta and then now you have 4 times the integral of 1 plus 1 half is simply 3 half so the integral of that would be 3 half theta minus the integral of 2 cosine theta would be uh, minus 2 sine theta and the integral of one half cosine two theta is one fourth sine two theta. And we evaluate it from zero to four pi. If you replace four pi or zero into either one of these two, they both will give us zero. The sine of four pi is zero, sine of zero is zero, sine of eight pi would be zero. So these two terms will kind of disappear. If you replace 4 pi and if you replace 4 pi for theta you'll get 4 times 3 half times 4 pi if you replace 0 for theta you still get 0 and this is uh, what is that to 24 pi So what we got at this point is the area on this, under this uh, curve. Okay, it's just integration. It's not nothing uh, complicated. You just need to replace the y function. And instead of dx, you write it as dx over dt multiplied by dt. dx over dt is basically the derivative of x with respect to time. In this case, with respect to theta. And now that we've talked about orbit lengths, let's extend our uh, formulation to curves as well. So let's say uh, 
we will learn that if you're calculating arc length for a function, we just need to calculate the square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared dx. And now if you replace dy over dx, if we're dealing with this curve, with the parametric curve, we need to replace dy over dx with, one second here, we need to replace it with dy over dt and dx over dt. And instead of dx, you can write dx over dt times dt. So instead of this, I can write dx over dt times dt. But then when you square this and multiply dx over dt everywhere, you can simplify. You can get rid of this denominator by multiplying a dx over dt everywhere. And that kind of cancels out the dx over dt. And so what do we get at the end? You can so you can kind of multiply dx over dt and divide. So this term will be disappearing, and what you get is dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared dt, the square root of that dt, and that's the same as the sum of uh, f prime plus g prime. If f and g are the corresponding uh, x and y uh, functions of t, and again alpha and beta are the correspond to uh, the boundaries. If you pick x equal to a, and if you pick x equal to b, what would be the corresponding t values? So here is an example. And say, find the arc length of the curve y equal to 2 cosine t and x equal to sine t over the interval 0 to 2 pi. So what would be the arc length? It would be the integral from 0 to 2 pi square root of. So this is g of t, and here you have f of t. You can consider if you want dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared dt, or you can replace them with gx and fx, ft and gt derivative. Either way is fine. So this is the same as 0 to 2 pi square root of. Derivative of x with respect to time, derivative of x with respect to time would be 2 cosine t squared plus derivative of y with respect to t would be 2 sine t negative squared dt. And if we simplify, what we get is integral from 0 to 2 pi. Sorry about that. Here we go square root of 4 cosine square t plus 4 sine square t dt and that is integral from 0 to 2 pi you can factor out the 4 what you have is sine square t plus cosine square t dt and what we know is that is simply 1. So you have integral 0 to 2 pi. This is simply 1. So you have square root of 4, which is 2 dt. And what is that integration? It is 2t evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. If you replace 2 pi, we will get 4 pi. If you replace 0, you get 0. So 4 pi minus 0, which is 4 pi. Okay, just to make sure that uh, we can have an idea of what this is. If you remember this equation, this equation represents, this curve represents something. The representation would be, if you find out what is x squared plus y squared, you would get 4. So this curve represents a circle of radius 2. This radius is basically 2. So the, what is the question asking? It's asking, find out what is the arc length. So what is the arc length of this circle? This is the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. In this case, radius is 2. So 2 pi times 2, which is exactly 4 pi. If we knew the equation is the circle, you didn't really need to go through this. But uh, assuming, assuming we didn't know that, we should go through this process and get the same result. That's a double check to make sure that you have the same result.
So we can extend the same idea to the uh, surface area as well. If you remember in the surface area, if you do rotation around the x-axis, this was the formula corresponding. To that. If you're dealing with the y as a function of x, but uh, for the curve, what we can represent is that this term, which was correspond to the length, the arc length, we already discussed that. You could replace it with dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared, dt, square root of that dt. And so if you have a curve, you just simply replace that arc length. And the boundaries, again, the boundaries, instead of x, you have correspond to t. So as an example, let's look at this example. Uh, we have a curve, cosine t for x, sine t for y. And we want to rotate this around the x-axis from x t from 0 to pi. So what we get is the surface. Sorry, let me choose. The surface area would be the integral from 0 to pi, 2 pi, 2 pi cosine t. Sorry, x is sine, y is sine t. And multiply by square root of dx over dt squared, so derivative of cosine is negative sine, negative sine t squared plus derivative of cos sine would be cosine t squared dt. And this is simply 1, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So what we have is integral from 0 to pi to pi sine t dt. And what is that integration? It is 2 pi times negative cosine t evaluated from 0 to pi. I can put this negative before the 2 pi just to make sure that you do not subtract it. Uh, if you replace cosine you get negative 1. If you replace 0 you will get 1. So you get negative 2 pi times negative 1 minus negative 2 pi times positive 1. And that is simply positive 4 pi. So that gives us the surface area. And this surface area is actually, so here let's see, what is this curve? This is a unit circle. Right, if x is cosine t, y is sine t. But when you pick 0 to pi, basically it's only the upper half of the curve. This is from 0 to pi. That's the representation of x equals to cosine, y equals to sine, and t changes from 0 to pi. So if you rotate it around the uh, x-axis, what do you get is a sphere. So you get a sphere of radius 1. And what we calculated is the surface area of that sphere, which is simply 4 pi. So basically you can now try to figure out what is the surface area of uh, uh, any sphere. Just replace an r here, r cosine r sine. And that would be a circle of radius r when you rotate it around the x-axis you get a sphere and you can find out what is the sphere surface area okay so these were some of the topics uh for this section i didn't do that many examples in my most of my examples the integration was quite easy because i didn't want to spend time on the integration technique it was mostly what do you do if you have a parametric curve instead of a function so this is basically the idea. Okay, so let me stop at this point. We can continue next time.